Hello, this is Group 8, Jesse Aquilina, Tina Hamill, and Erica Mauser. We are presenting on the management of bilingual aphasia and specifically cognate therapy. What is bilingual aphasia? According to current linguistic, psychological, and neurolinguistic approaches, the term bilingual refers to all those people who use two or more languages or dialects in their everyday lives. Aphasia is a language disorder resulting from damage to brain areas that subserve the formulation and understanding of language and its components. Bilingual aphasia together refers to an individual who speaks two or more languages and has a language disorder caused by damage to an area of the brain that is used for language comprehension, production, or both. Factors influencing the success of bilingual aphasia treatment. Premorbid language proficiency of the individual, the age of acquisition of each language, level of impairment postmorbid, the type of aphasia, and its severity. Recovery patterns. Language profici proficiency pre and post brain damage varies among individuals. Therefore, recovery patterns also vary. The three most well-known uh, phases of aphasia recovery are the acute phase, the lesion phase, and the late phase. P. Trace 1985 described the most common L1 recovery patterns in bilingual aphasics. Um, the parallel recovery, recovery is both languages are recovered at the same time. Selective recovery, one language slowly recovers and the other is never recovered. Successive recovery, one language improves before the other or others. Preacher's rule and Rebo's law are two ideas that are well known but not proven facts. Um, Preacher's rule is an idea for about recovery that is individuals tend to recover the most familiar language and Rebo's law is that the native language recovers. And now I will briefly describe a few types of bilingual aphasia therapy that have some support in the literature. Semantic feature analysis is a bilingual aphasia therapy that aims to improve naming of nouns through the use of semantic-based treatment for individuals with anomic aphasia. <clears throat> a model-driven intervention is designed to increase the client's strengths by creating a modeled intervention that builds the individual's strengths. This therapy was investigated by Ansaldo, Saidi, and Ruiz in 2010 with an individual who is experiencing pathological language switching and was shown to help the individual monitor and self-correct themselves. Cross-language treatment um, is a type of bilingual aphasia therapy that uh, involves intervention occurring in one language while gains are made throughout therapy in both languages. Goral, Levy, and Castle investigated this therapy with a trilingual individual and uh, therapy was conducted in the L1, L2 and improvements were made in the L3 while the L1 showed no changes whatsoever. Semantic naming treatment is a therapy aimed to strengthen semantic representations in order to facilitate the access of phonological representations in trained items in the trained language with the hope of generalization to all languages. And finally, cognate therapy, which is the focus of this presentation. Our rationale for using cognate therapy is that it addresses both languages of the client, promotes within and cross-linguistic generalization, and in the research there is positive findings regarding speed and accuracy of naming, resistance to naming errors, and the use of self-cueing to correct errors. Cognate therapy is based on the notion of bilingual behaviors in monolingual terms. Paradis said in 2000, a comparison between unilinguals and bilinguals has revealed that there are no functional differences between them. This observation has led to the assumption that there are probably no neurofunctional differences either, and that, therefore, the brain of a unilingual should be organized in a manner similar to that of a bilingual.
This is important for therapy because it help us, helps us gain an idea of how language is represented in the brain of bilinguals. The theoretical basis to cognate therapy. Cognate therapy is based on the theory that bilingual lexical organization is similar to that of monolinguals and that the system is governed by morphological relationships, meaning that lexical items are stored in clusters according to their morphology regardless of the language. Boundaries in a bilingual system are governed not according to language, but by similarity in form and meaning. Cognates are words that are similar in form and meaning across languages. For example, blue and blue in English and French. Bilinguals experience greater success recalling cognates than false cognates, which are words that are similar in form but not meaning. According to this theory, cognates are stored in the same cluster, whereas non-cognates are stored separately. According to a study done by Lehler and Kersner on tests of word recognition of a bilingual aphasic client, better performance was seen on cognates than non-cognates. If one of the cognates was impaired, so was the pair. If one of the cognates was preserved, so is the pair. If cognates are stored in clusters, then low-frequency cognates would benefit from their high-frequency translations. Here we have a session plan for a Spanish-English bilingual individual, and this can involve a variety of tasks. Training tasks typically incorporate both written and spoken language. While there are a number of tasks used in the research, we're going to demonstrate a few of them. The first task we're going to demonstrate involves matching English and Spanish written words to pictures. Another activity you can do is to have the client complete closed tasks. The boy rides his bicycle. You eat off of a plate. She played a song on her piano. You can also have the client match spoken English words to printed Spanish words and match spoken Spanish words to printed English words. Lamp. Piano. Train. Bicycle. Plate. During confrontation naming of cognate pairs, you would present the client with common, identifiable photographs on 3 by 5 inch cards, one at a time. Have the client name each picture in English and then later in Spanish. Lamp. Bicycle. Piano. Plate. Train. During lexical decision tasks, the client identifies real words from non-words. First, you would inform the client that they will see a series of real words and non-words presented on 3 by 5 inch cards. The client should be instructed to point to yes if the word is a real word in either English or Spanish and to point to no if it is not a real word in either language. Calf. Tigre. Kiev. Train. Plato. Tips for monolingual SLPs serving bilingual aphasics. It is important to gather a case history to determine development and use of both languages. This will give you information regarding patterns of recovery following the neurological insult. Collaborate with family and friends of the client to determine the relevancy of target words. This can provide you with information of high frequency versus low frequency words. And this can also be done by establishing contacts, contacts or networks of professionals that can assist you. It's important to remember that the relevance of the words can vary across cultures and individuals. Next, become familiar with languages and pronunciation. You can do this by collaborating with an interpreter and or family member of the client. This can help to ensure that meaning is not lost in translation, and it is important to remember to fully prepare and explain the tasks to the interpreter. 
Also, pay attention to dialectical differences. A few more tips for monolingual SLPs. Consider the linguistic preferences of the client and their families. And make referrals when necessary.